Hello friends, welcome to yet another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Biology. Today I'll be bringing you a very exciting topic known as COVID-19 and why males are worsely affected by COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 virus compared to the female counterpart. For the starters, I would like to inform you that WHO has already declared the SARS-CoV-2 as a global pandemic. More than 1 million people have been affected by it and more than 70,000 people have already lost their lives. So in order to begin this lecture, I would like to tell you that it has been seen that males are suffering worsely, they need more ventilators, they are dying more, right? There is more catastrophic damage in case of males when you compare it to the female counterpart. So scientists have really tried hard, meticulously in order to understand the virology and the pathogenesis. So let's get down to business. In my previous videos also, I have broken down to you the virology of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the various kinds of drugs like hydroxychloroquine, remdesivir, tocilizumab, as the agents which can be used by the scientists which are in the phase 3 clinical trials for the development in the patients who are suffering from COVID-19. Now, in this very lecture, I would like to talk about the pathogenesis. How does the virus really get in and how can we curb it? First of all, we have several types of receptors. The virus of SARS-CoV-2 lineage, the SARS-CoV-2 virus specifically, has got a spike protein. Now, this is spike protein belongs to the class 1 membrane fusion proteins. Now it needs priming and it needs activation. Before the priming event, it needs to be cleaved by a certain enzyme known as TMPRSH2, transmembrane serine protease type 2, which is a 492 amino acid protein and which belongs to the type 2 integral membrane protein type. And after the activation of TMPRSH2, the external domain or the ectodomain it gets cleaved out from the transmembrane domain and it is released in the extracellular space whereby it cleaves the specific spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus at the junction known as S1-H2 junction. This specific cleavage is known as priming. After this cleavage, the S1 subunit which is formed after the priming event contains the ectodomain and also the receptor binding activity. It has the receptor binding domain at the distal site of the S1 subunit. Then what happens is, in order to get into the cell, it has to bind to the H2, angiotensin converting enzyme isotype type 2. It's a type 1 membrane protein, integral membrane protein, transmembrane membrane protein. Now, what happens is, H2 is of 805 amino acids. And H2 is predominantly expressed in the type 1 and type 2 alveolar cells in the humans. Now, what happens is, after the S1 binds to the S2, after the S1 binds to the H2 specific protein, then the H2 region, the second region, the H2 region also needs to be primed, also needs to be cleaved. This cleavage is known as the activation. Now, H2 is cleaved at the H2 prime region which is immediately upstream of the fusion peptide. And this causes, what this does is, this causes an in irreversible conformational change in the protein, thereby causing the fusion, the ingress of the virus. Whereas the first cleavage at the S1-H2 domain is done at the pre-fusion conformational state, when the virus is in the pre-fusion conformational state. So thereby it breaks the pre-fusion conformational state and causes the activation of the S1 freeze up the S1 so that the S1 can bind to the S2 and now the S2 prime cleavage causes more of irreversible conformational change so that the virus can get entry into the cells, mainly the pneumocytes or type 2 alveolar cells known as the septal cells. Now during the process of pre-fusion conformation, the S1 and S2 domain are not connected by covalent bonds. So it, let's get this very very clear. The S1 and S2 domain are connected by non-covalent bonds, thereby the cleavage by the TMPRSS2 becomes that much more easy. Then, scientists have also been talking about furin. Furin belongs to a specific superfamily of proteins known as PCSK, proprotein convertase, subtilisin, kexin. It is different from TMPRSS2 since TMPRSS2 is a serine protease. This is a proprotein convertase. It is expressed mainly in the Golgi apparatus, right? It is expressed mainly in the Golgi apparatus and in the research it has been shown that 
after the virion particle assembly inside the cell only the furin specific cleavage site is also present between the S1 S2 junction that is specific in this SARS-CoV-2 virus it's absent in any other SARS virus like SARS-CoV-1 which cause SARS or any other virus of the lineage B to which the SARS-CoV-2 also belongs so it's specifically present in this case and then what happens is it can cleave it can prime the virus beforehand that is the way furin works it can prime the virus beforehand so even if you block TMPRSS2 via drugs like camostat mesylate still it can be able to be primed it is primed already in the cell when it was becoming a complete virion particle because the furin is expressed in the Golgi apparatus and belongs to the PCSK superfamily, pro protein converted subtilisin kinin kinexin superfamily, pro protein converted subtilisin kexin superfamily. That's how the furin derives its name and that's how the furin works. Then, coming to the various cathepsins, cathepsins are expressed mostly on lysosomes. I've expressed to you in my previous videos that cathepsin is extremely important why because this specific SARS-CoV-2 virus takes the entry through the endosomal route and I have told you in my previous videos that the hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine there is a lysomotropic drug meaning that they can increase the pH and then cause the inactivation of the proteases like catepsin B, catepsin H, catepsin L. In research papers it was seen it has been observed it has been tested that if we inhibit catepsin B the viral ingress is not that much inhibited but if we inhibit cathepsin L the viral ingress is extremely inhibited thereby cathepsin L is also responsible for the activation of the spike protein then various other proteins like trypsin like TMPRSS4 like human airway trypsin activating protease HAT these types of protease can also activate the virus can also prime and activate the spike protein now in the research it was found there is a latest journal a few days ago published in EMBO I have given the link in the description below also it has been found that the males are more affected by females why first of all it was found that there are specific cells what they did was they tried they did the direct cell sequencing of the progenitor cell types of a specific type of progenitor cell type in the bronchi of female lungs then what they got was in the trans segmental section in the trans segmental section of the bronchi the ACE2 angiotensin converting enzyme isotype 2 which is the receptor for the SARS-CoV-2 gets overexpressed is hyperexpressed on a specific transiently secretory cell type lineage and they also found out in this study that AH2 is hyper expressed over expressed as we age and the expression of AH2 is much more in males compared to females but it's not a definitive study as the sample size was only 12 and 4 so the sample size was not that great as to come to a conclusive study as to call it a conclusive study or to come to a conclusive conclusion but it's a trend and the scientists can study it more on this specific transient secretory cell type where H2 is hyper expressed in males more than the females whereas the MERS and SARS-CoV-2 sorry SARS-CoV-1 which cause the SARS they can also attach to the human dipeptidyl peptidase 4 but the SARS-CoV-2 only attaches to the human H2 receptor so that's the conceptual prowess you needed to attain in order to comprehend this lecture. If you missed out on any point or if you couldn't comprehend or if you have any kind of doubts, then kindly do not hesitate to post your queries in the comment section below. In the description box, I have also put the links of my previous COVID-19 videos and also of my Facebook page. Kindly like my Facebook page and contact me via messenger with all your doubts. I'll be replying as soon as possible. And if you have liked the page, if you have liked my content, then kindly hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel Rahul's Advanced Biology and do not forget to hit the notification bell so as to get notified when my next video comes along. Thanks a lot. See you soon.